If you want to know where the stars of the future are lying, this is your class. The Hawkers European Talent Cup heads to Jerez for round four of its championship season, and it's a double header at the 4.4 kilometre long circuit. History oozes from the hillsides here. Jerez is a staple on all motorcycle racing calendars. It's a real treat for fans and riders alike. 15 laps, all of which are going to be chaotic. We can't wait to get into this. The Hawkers European Talent Cup always delivers. We're here at the Circuito de Jerez Angel Nieto in Andalusia, Spain for round four of the 2022 Finetwork FIM Junior GP World Championship. This is the youngest class here. I'm Kiko Charles and alongside me, Steve English, Steve, if race one for Junior GP, no spoilers, is anything to go by, we are in for an absolute barnstormer here in the European Talent Cup. All right, Kiko, I'll do my best not to give away any spoilers, <laughs> but uh, we've got 15 minutes before a 15 lap race here in the European Talent Cup. Just on my way back up from Park Fermi after the Moto3 race, I was chatting to a few of the ETC team managers and they did say that the cooler track temperatures could change things quite a bit. I know there's a few riders that have been suffering from chatter issues, suffering from handling issues. They're expecting in the cooler temps this morning that those riders could make a lot of progress. So even though we've got some riders down the field further than we would have expected, don't be too surprised if we see riders make progress from the fifth, sixth, seventh rows of the grid to get themselves up into those top 10 places. You can do that in the ETC, but obviously enough, you're also looking at the riders at the front of the field. Here in Hareth in particular, it's quite difficult to come from too much further back than the third row of the grid to be able to win races. Yeah, it's never actually happened. The lowest it's come from uh, here at Hareth, I think, is seventh place. That was David Alonso. I may stand corrected on that. I haven't got my stats sheet to hand. Uh, but this was last time out. This was the European Talent Cup at Catalonia, the Circuit of Barcelona, Catalonia in uh, Montmelo. And it was a great ride from Joel Esteban early on, but it wouldn't be easy. He didn't clear off like he did at Estoril. The battle was fierce. Dodo Boggio was in on the action. One of the riders with one of the best names in the whole paddock. But his teammate Joel Esteban was right there. Made a slight mistake halfway through the race and uh, forced back as Nico Tirol watched on rather anxiously. It's one of the classes where it is so unpredictable. Max Martinez was chasing a first win, there was this massive moment for one of the uh, uh, Finetwork Mir junior team riders. This was the final lap showdown with Uriarty and Esteban, and it was Uriarty who got it on the line. Fantastic stuff from the number 51. He'll be looking to do that again today. And headlining news coming into today is that championship leader and the man you saw in that battle, Joel Esteban, is out of action. He has got an illness coming into this round. It's prevented him from coming to the circuit to race. He's too ill. Uh, it's not COVID, we can confirm that much. So he is on the mend, he's had surgery, he is on the mend. Uh, but that means that the Hawkers European Talent Cup, Steve, said it a couple of times already throughout the course of this weekend when we've been talking about our favorites. This is a land of opportunity. This could go any way today. It's absolutely wide open now. And what's going to be interesting is to see what happens at the championship standings after today, because Esteban's been in such great form. He's had four wins so far this season, sorry, four podiums so far this season, been really strong everywhere we've gone. And now it's going to be a case of who's able to make up the most ground on him in the championship standings because he does hold a pretty handy lead of 22 points as it is over Guido Pini at the moment. But uh, Pini starting on the front row with the grid. He's got an opportunity to really take some big chunks out of that lead and leave today as the European Cup, the European Talent Cup championship leader. Pini uh, second in the championship and on the front row. Uh, this was qualifying. Max Martinez got the pole. Can he repeat his double from last year? Intentaré recortar los máximos puntos, ya que este año es defender mi título y quiero, me gustaría ganar otra vez, así que lo veo posible y con muchas ganas. Van todos muy rápido, yo creo que va a ser una carrera difícil, va, hay pilotos muy fuertes y bueno, a ver cómo va. Yeah, I'm 
It was a rough start to the season for Max Martinez, but he is absolutely back with a bang. He's already won a race. He's been on the podium. He's looking to go and defend his title that he took last year, Steve. He was a double winner at Jerez last year. The 14-year-old, can he do it again today? He's 54 points adrift in the championship standings, but with Esteban out of this race, this is his opportunity to make up for those big double non-scores, well, triple non-scores at the start of the season. Put two podiums last time out, though, does give him that bit of confidence coming from Valencia, Catalonia, and now a pole position here in Jerez. He's just building that momentum once again. Last season, Martinez was a real star in this class. Just the age limits meant that he's not able to step up to the junior GP class yet. And he got his first win here at Jerez. So happy memories in the south of Spain. Will he be able to repeat it? We'll find out very soon. Second on the grid, Guido Pini of the AC Racing team from Borgo San Lorenzo in Italy, just right next door to Mugello, chasing that first win. Well, you mentioned Mugello, and uh, he was in action in the Italian Championship in the CIV classes only a couple of weeks ago there. He claimed a race victory. He's been top five every race so far this season. He's been consistent, 22 points behind in the championship standings. But with Esteban out, this is a good opportunity to make a lot of hay when the sun shines. Yeah, and he is within that race winning distance as well. So for a win for him today, a career first win today, will automatically put him ahead of Esteban, who will have some catching up to do when this slot gets to Portimao. Third on the grid, we're going to check in very, very soon. Rico Salmella, the number 27, 14 year old from Finland. Best grid position of the year in his first front row since Valencia last year. Uh, what can we expect from him? He's looking for a first win. Yeah, I like Rico, what we've seen from him so far this season. You can see their podiums in Estoril and Valencia. He's always qualified well. He's qualified inside the top 10 every race so far this season. So he's got good speed. He's racing in the Red Bull Rookies Cup as well. So he's getting a lot of experience this season. He looks like he's pretty promising. He really does, and we've seen him get the podium already at the start of this year. He looked dejected in Estoril, then it was reversed, and he got it back, and he was all he was suddenly elated. It was at Guido Pini's expense, if I remember correctly, back in Portugal. That was round one of the season, feels like ages ago. Fourth on the grid, Rush Moody from Port Elizabeth in South Africa. So South Africa, like Finland, chasing a first victory. Uh, they've never actually had a podium in either of them countries. So Moodley starts fourth. What can we expect here? Well, I think from Maurice Moodley, what we've seen is a career best effort in the qualifying session. Now he needs to try and make sure he's able to come away with, you know, top five finish, top six finish would be a great result for him. Fifth place is uh, Brian Uriarty. He was a winner last time out on the run to the line at Catalonia in that brilliant showdown. Um, that was one of the best races of the year because we obviously at the first round of the season see we saw Esteban clear off but Uriarty reeled him back in last time here he is the number 51 first front row came at Jerez that was last year he starts fifth this year he's level with Martinez on point on podiums with seven each in their career and he's looking to get in this title fight yeah he did win last year as well so he's a rider that looks like he could be one of those potential stars to keep an eye on in the ETC you can see there that it's been an up and down season for him winning a podium three non-scores but certainly Uriarty is a rider worth keeping an eye on as it is right now he's 50 points adrift in the championship standing so he needs a big result in these two races today to be able to close back that lead to Joel Esteban. Joel Esteban with well wishes from Dodo Boggio. I said it earlier, he has got the best name on the grid. Dodo Boggio, 14 from Turin in Italy. Two podiums this year, started very well. Always started inside the top eight, so he's a good qualifier as well. Yeah, and he's had a couple of podiums this year. This is his third season in the ETC. He's made a big step forward this year. Looks a lot more impressive, looks a lot more confident out there on the bike as well so certainly a rider worth keeping an eye on on the 47 machine through the course of this race good to see some fans joining in uh, here this weekend fim uh junior world junior gp world championship because it is really where the stars of the future are we say it so often it's becoming a bit cliche but it is so true fabio quartararo won the motor gp world championship last year and he took two titles uh here in this paddock so he's definitely uh, this paddock is definitely the one to keep an eye on. This is Guillaume Plonk. He will start seventh, and he had a first top ten of the season last uh, in Valencia. Was on course for it again in Catalonia, but crashed out. Yeah, and uh, I think the top ten has to be the target for the Frenchman. See what he's able to do over the course of this race. 15 laps, it's about trying to make sure you're able to stay in the lead group, stay out of trouble, but top ten be a really good positive result for him builds on what's happened so far this season as well great to see a french flag there with the number 24 and hashtag gm on the front of it so obviously the, the friends and family are 
made, have made the trip over here. I think they're actually based in Spain anyway, because Gaban, the brother, the older brother, does train with him a little bit. Uh, this is uh, in eighth place, middle of the third row, Lorenz Tony Luciano. No, he's not something out of the Sopranos. That's Tony Arbolino. But this is uh, one of the riders who's not actually act really featured that much. But has really come on strong, Steve, here at Herrera. Yeah, he was the Northern Talent Cup runner-up last year, and uh, he's been able to, like you saw there, a top 10 finish in his first race of the season in Estoril and score points in three races. So it's been a solid start to the season for him, but uh, this is an opportunity to really kick on from that. But certainly for Tony, he's a rider that shows the Northern Talent Cup is producing some talent as well. Obviously, we've seen... Gorba in the Moto3 Junior GP class as well. So there is uh, riders coming through from the NTC as well. Ninth on the grid, Brit Watch. Top Brit uh, is Emmanuel Brinton. Now, I can remember when I was back doing Cool Fab a few years ago, he was one of the stars to watch out for. Uh, and he has had a top 10 in every race so far this season. That's your pole, man. Max Martinez will look to do a double again. He did it last year. He's a race winner this year, and he's the defending title holder. Will he convert pole position? He lines up beside Guido Pini, who can easily be championship leader after this race, and almost certainly after this weekend. Rico Salmella joins him on the front row. Further back of the top nine that we've just gone through, best ever career finish for Hamad al Sahuti on the grid. First top 10 for Qatar, he's 10th. Gonzalo Perez is 11th, Carter Thompson, watch out for him, uh, Australian champion in 12th. All the way down the field, there's riders. Casey O'Gorman will line up 16th. He's been a race leader, and he's been right in the battle right the way through this year. He can come through, but he's going to have to get his, uh, he's going to have to get on with it very, very soon from 16th on the grid. Johnny Gardes as well. All the way down the field, we've got the top 30 here as they go out for the warm-up lap. The Hawkers European Talent Cup, 30 riders on the grid, Steve. And not all of them could necessarily win, but it wouldn't be a surprise to see someone come from so far down. Yeah, I think even, like you mentioned, Casey O'Gorman there on the number 67 machine. He's had a rough run of form in the European Talent Cup of late, but the cooler temperatures, he could be one of the riders that's able to find a little bit more confidence now. He struggled a little bit with chatter over the course of this weekend so far, but he has been really strong here in Jerez. He's been able to have a top five finish here in both races in the Red Bull Rookies Cup earlier in the season. Started the campaign very strong, battling at the front of the field in Estoril, but he's lost momentum. Now he needs to refine it as we move into the second half of the ETC season. We had a coffee yesterday with team manager or team principal Michael Laverty, and we were talking. Actually, he said that Johnny Garnes this round has outshone Casey to some degree and looks more comfortable on the bike. Garnes is another rider we expect to come good. Just looking at the air temperature, it has risen a little bit as I look out the window, but the cloud is still there. 25 degrees air temp, 30 degrees track temperature, still perfect for racing. Steve, these ETC bikes, uh, they're only small, but they're very, very fast in the corners. Where are these overtaking hotspots for these? Pretty much the same as what we saw in the Junior GP class where turn one, turn six, and the last corner you can make a lot of moves. But it's all about momentum on an ETC bike. Small bikes, it's all about being able to carry your corner speed, keep yourself as close to the rider in front as possible, use the slipstream, make the move. The big things for us to keep an eye on during the course of this race, as ever in, uh, in racing these days, is track limits. See who's exceeding the track limits onto the blue paint on the outside of the course and uh, who's doing that on a consistent basis. In the ETC, it's a little bit better now that the field's a little bit smaller. Only 30 riders now is your max grid size in this class. That's tended to make it where it's a little bit easier to find your position out on track in any of the battles, but it is very easy to run wide, especially a track like Corrette where one corner leads into the next. Particularly good for us that there's only 30 riders on the grid. We just about managed with this, but it is a really good field. Lots of talent all the way through. Number 28, Max Martinez starts with pole. Without the championship leader in play, Steve, who is your favourite? Who are you going to pick out for this one? Well, Max Martinez, you can see there on the 28, he's the reigning European Talent Cup winner. Last season, he was incredibly strong and consistent. This season's been a tough start to the campaign. Last time out in Barcelona, though, he claimed his first win of the season, followed it up with another podium. He wants to do the double here. This is where last year he picked up two wins as well in the European Talent Cup. So keep an eye on the number 28 machine. Max Martinez will go from pole. They held them a long time on the grid for the Junior GP class earlier on today. Safety car just pulls in at the back. Martinez, Pini and Salmeda. 28, 93 and 27. That's your front row. Who will convert it? 
Lights out, we're into race one for the Hawkers European Talent Cup and it's a swift start from the number 21, that's Rouge Moodley. The South African has got right ahead of this field. Rico Salamella from third place is looking to dive from, can't do it. Rouge Moodley from fourth on the grid sweeps majestically across the front and takes the lead. The number 21 leads a race ahead of 27. Max Martinez, third place from Poli, still in the mix. They're all through cleanly by the looks of it. Bit of pushing and shoving further downfield, but good start from Rouge Moodley. The number 21 is leading. Yeah, Moodley with a really good start from the second row of the grid. You can see there, though, Rico Salamela on the 27. He's about to try and make a move down in towards turn five, but look at the 28 <laughs> of Martinez. He's the rider to keep an eye on. We know how good he is around Haran. We know that he's got his tail up. He's been a confident. So certainly that number 28 machine, the pole setter, he's the rider to watch today. And we know how good he is on the brakes as well. I can remember when he made his debut last year. We couldn't believe his style in the brake now. He's got it all a bit tidier this time. He hits the front. So the number 28 is leading ahead of that look to me like Sal Mello. No, it wasn't. It was Uriarty up from the second row of the grid in fifth. So Moody back to third. But Uriarty's come through from the middle of the second row into second. Now he's into the lead. So that's all out of date already. We're only at turn eight on lap one. And already Uriarty's hit the front. Yeah, and you can see Martinez trying to set something up as well. Brinton as well, though, on the 43 machine with a really good start from the third row of the grid. He's after getting duffed up a little bit there by Dodo Baggio on the 47. Baggio can see the riders at the front trying to break away a little bit. So he needs to get in front of Moodley as quick as possible. Possible. And uh, you can see there from the 27, just making sure that everyone around Salmela knows that they got to stay with him if they want to try and stop fighting with one another, try and break their way up towards the 51, the race leader. We've just seen a, it is oh. a double long lap penalty for Brinton. He was a bit too quick off the gun at the start. That's such a shame, a double long lap penalty then for Emmanuel Brinton, really hoping for good things of him. Of course, it doesn't necessarily end your race. You can still latch onto the back of the group. We saw at the last corner there, Max Martinez having a look at Uriarty. Couldn't quite get it done. He had a load of front end chatter, but he's through on the inside this time. Through into the lead, Max Martinez hits the front. Yeah, good move there from Martinez. And you can see Yuri Arti behind on the 51. Just he's going to try and keep that watch in brief. But in the ETC, you've also got to attack as soon as possible. Otherwise, it's a bit too easy to get yourself in a scrap with everyone else. That's where it becomes really important to always hit the front of these groups. Just looking downfield, a terrible getaway from Guido Pini. He's down, I think he's just gone up into ninth place, but he started on the front row, so the, one of the riders who really is looking to capitalise on Joel Esteban's absence here in Jerez has had a terrible getaway. He's down by the number eight, that's Garcia Migue in, in ninth place, so a lot of work to do for Pini. He's already detached from the leading group. Uriarty looking on the inside, couldn't quite do it. Roosh Moodley out a bit wide there. Going to get shoved again if he's not careful. Back to fifth place. Boccio up into third. Yeah, that's where for Moodley there on the number 21 machine, it is really important for him just to make sure he's able to stay in this lead group, try and come away with a good finish here inside the top five, top six, to be a really good result for the South African rider. Yeah, Guillaume Plonk has done really well as well. He's staying in that leading group, fourth uh, in eighth place there, looking very good. We're going to get a replay at the start. Watch the 43 with Emmanuel Brinton, Steve. Yeah, you can see there, Brinton, just uh, away well before everyone else. But I'm going to keep an eye on the 93 as well off the line. You can see there, Rich, Rich Moodley with a really fast getaway and straight away, Peeney from the front row of the grid had lost a lot of spots. But you can see there, the 43 of Brinton, just how many rows the grid he made up just by being really quick off the line. But uh, he's going to take his first long lap penalty now he's got another one to take but you can see here in Jerez it is possible to take that penalty without losing too much momentum but you do feed straight back into the track it's a little bit on the limit that yeah hold your breath there dearie me Emmanuel Brinton was right out on the edge of the curb as he came in and that would have got everyone's peckers up coming out of that turn who were behind him but hopefully he can come back into it that promotes a couple of riders uh, Guillaume Plonk is one of them he's now up into seventh Rico Samela having got a good start back down to sixth Dodo Boggio with the fastest lap, the number 47, chasing Max Martinez. I remind you, double race winner last year, Max Martinez, 54 points back in this title race, and your series leader is out. That's Joel Esteban, he's out. Uh, he will hopefully be back in the next round, but it's 53, 53 points up for grabs here. Ooh, a little bit of a moment coming through turn five, the Cito Pons corner for Guillaume Plonk, who makes that, he's just at seventh place, but he's a little bit behind at the moment. He is just holding on as things stand. Boggio to the front, good move up from third to first. So 
Dodo Boccio comes through as that's the 13 getting pushed out. That's Hakim Danish who's come through. Yeah, Hakim just running a little bit wide there in the exit of turn six, but look at Uriarty now, attacking straight back on Boccio, but Boccio able to carry that corner speed, sweep across the front of Uriarty as well. But at the front of this field, you can see it is a leading group that is starting to stretch their way away from the rest of the field. But interestingly, Brinton already to the front of that second group as well. So he's still got another long lap penalty to take. This is the gap back towards Brinton in that second group. Because the battle is so fierce at the front, they could trip up, trip each other up. And when Brinton comes out of his second long lap penalty, he may be able to get his head down and catch them back up if they're taking time off each other. Yeah, just looking at it there in that second group, Brinton lost it. a lot of ground there in that last sector, actually lost four or five spots in that as well. You can see the wins in the last corner. Max Martinez on the 28, he's able to make up some ground. That's Brinton taking his second penalty at the top of the shot. And now he'll try and force his way back into those points paying positions. Yeah, down outside the top 20 at the moment. Not a good start from the Qatari Hamad Al Sahut. He's back into 22nd. I was just going to say, Hakim Danish has come up from row five. He started 13th. He's in the lead battle. That shows how crazy the Hawker's European Talent Cup can be. What's interesting is uh, Perea, Cesar Perea on the number 18 machine actually lapping as fast as the race leader. only a tenth of a second slower than Dodo Baggio, but he's all the way down in 14th position. It shows just how close it is if you're trying to make up a lot of time. If you lose time in this class, you immediately have to then uh, try and just, just make it back straight away. But it's really difficult just seeing that Brinton's been given a track limits warning now as well. So miserable start to the race, these opening three or four laps for him. It's either super miserable or they're considering track limits when he's going out of the circuit get into the long lap so I'm not quite sure if that's an automatic sensor thing or if it's Brinton actually exceeding track limits. You could have it for it's the coming back from the long Maybe. lap penalty as well but uh, certainly at the front of the field these riders not having any of those concerns right now it is still Uriarty leading on the 51 machine and then Max Martinez last year's European Talent Cup winner double podiums last time out he knows that this is a weekend where he needs to make up an awful lot of points because he had a miserable start to the year in the first three races terrible start steve we was in esterelli i sided out of the race both times on lap one and he was in contention as well out of the podium positions okay it was only lap one but a terrible start to the year. he gave up 50 points there he's got an opportunity to take 50 points back and 50 points closer to retaining his title. At the moment, Uriarty leads it. Martinez is second. Danish looking on the inside at turn 13, the Jorge Lorenzo hairpin. But them front four, those front four at the moment, just slightly edging clear. I hold my breath as I say that because, of course, Rouge Moody in fifth. This could all concertina up at any moment's notice. Yeah, Uriarty at the front of the field just setting up the new fastest lap of the race, a few tenths of a second clear of everyone else. You can see here the 43 of Brinton around the outside into turn one. He's trying to make up as many spots as he can after that penalty. He's down in about 17th, 18th position right now, so a lot of ground to make up. The goal for him is try and make sure you're able to get to the front of this group. That's Guido Pini up there in eighth spot right now, so a lot of work still to be done, but there's actually a lot of time left for Brinton as well if he's got the speed. 11 laps is a long time in Hawker's European Talent Cup, especially around here. We're looking at lap times around 149.1, 1, 1.92. The fastest lap is a 48.8, but that's by Uriarty at the front. He's setting the pace, but look, around 49-1, 49-2 is a good lap time around here. Max Martinez hits the front, Dodo Boggio follows him through. Hakim Danish comes through into third place. That pushes Uriarty, led onto that straight. From first back to fourth, Rouge Moody will be having to go in a minute. The purple number 21 machine, the South African having a great ride. It's the best we've seen of him all season. Yeah, I think for Moodley and then for Salmera and for Plant, they need to just try and see if they're able to latch on to the back of this top four. The top four look like they've got a little bit more pace than the chasing chasing riders right now, but it is up to them to be able to try and find something to be able to get into that battle. But right now, it does look like the leading four have that bit of an advantage. I can't believe the word I'm about to say, but fifth, sixth and seventh, it won't hurt them to learn a little bit in this class by following four of the fast guys in the class. Oh, it never hurts to learn in this class, and that's where you see a lot of riders really make a lot of progress during the course of a season, and uh, suddenly they just make that big jump forward, and you learn an awful lot more looking at the guys like Max Martinez on the 28th that's at the front of this field, Baggio with the progress he's made this year, Yuri Arti's a double race winner, he's at seven or eight podiums in his ETC career, so uh, certainly there's a lot of riders that uh, can uh, be used as that bit of a yardstick for the chase of three. Hakim Danish getting a 
the board, pit board there, saying warning. Not sure what that's quite for. We haven't had anything on our timing monitors. We haven't had anything for it, but we have seen him run off track limits. So clearly the team are aware of that. They want to make sure he's aware of it. So it's something that in the next 10 laps doesn't come back to, to bite him. Very good team, that team as well. Very well run. We've had so much success through the years. Look at this, four abreast. We've got 10 laps to go, you'd never guess it. If you're just tuning in, no, it's not the last lap. <laughs> We're not even at half race distance. Max Martinez with a track limits ward in the number 28, who has just hit the front. So Max Martinez looking for his second win of the year and his third consecutive win at Jerez. Might have a little track limits warning and a penalty to come if he carries on exceeding them. But let's hope he doesn't. He's leading well at the front. Yeah, when you get that warning, you then get one more time where you're able to exceed track limits before you're given the penalty. So for Martinez, we're only a third of the way through this race. He's now going to have to be on his best behavior for the rest of this race. Yeah, and it, he needs to be as well. He needs to take advantage of Joel Esteban's absence. Esteban has been so dominant in this year so far. Should have really had a win in Catalonia. Was pipped to the post on the line by Uriarty then. What we're seeing here, Steve, this is the run into turn one. How crucial is it to get it all anchored up here? Yeah, and you can see there Martinez out in front. It's Baggio and Uriarty behind them. This is the run into turn one. There are a few bumps on the entry into there as well. You can see the front end just moving around a little bit firm. Just looking at the times right now, the race leaders down in the low one minute 49. The fastest rider out there is actually Emmanuel Brinton further down the field as well. So Brinton doing a good job at this stage to try and recover. Yeah, Brinton has got some great paces up. Now ahead, right on the verge of points, he's chasing Keso Gorman, his old rival from the Cool Fab days, actually. That's for the final point position, Keso Gorman in 15th. And besides that, Johnny Garness in 19th place. So the Brits and the Irish are coming on very, very strong. Back at the front, Guillaume Plonk was momentarily in 6th place, got ahead of Rouge Moody, then Moody's taking it back. But these front seven really got a great lead over Jesus Rios has come up into eighth place. That's from way there. That's 19th on the grid. So Jesus Rios has absolutely flown up the order. Back at the front, Martinez leading well. Yeah, we did see Rios last time out have a top five in Catalonia, so he's got a bit of confidence to try and make sure he's able to make good use of that right now as well. And he was in the leading group when he was taken out by Al Sahuti, I think that was in Estoril back at the start here. That'll be track limits, I believe, for Martinez. So let's hope he's not used it up in a straight line. That won't be very useful at all. But at the moment, he's leading. Second place, Dodo Boggio hanging in there. Boggio is really in this title hunt. He's looking to get in to the he's fifth at the moment. He's a little bit behind. He's been dominated by his teammates so far. He's looking at the lead of this race right now for a couple of good, solid podium point scoring positions here, and he's back in the race. Yeah, and just looking in the second group as well, just behind this, obviously you were mentioning about uh, Pini and Rios at the top of that group. We've also got around about 10 riders within a second in that second group as well, and lots of riders making their progress all the way through that group. It's a proper yo-yo battle for uh, that eighth position right now. And some good riders down there, Steve. I mean, they're all very good, but Alberto Fernandez is down there. Nico Tirol watches on as his rider, Dodo Boggio, looks for the race lead. But Alberto Fernandez is down there. Pini, second in the championship, is in that group as well. Keisu Gorman, race leader in this class, is in 13th. Gonzalo Perez is right there. He's on the front row back at Estoril. And, of course, Emmanuel Brinton now in the points in 15th. Hopefully he's not exceeded any more track limits. Max Martinez at the moment with a ten and a half gap. It's completely academic. There is no gap at all. Yeah, we're just coming up towards half distance. Danish there with his fastest lap of the race, the new lap, uh, the new fast lap in this one at 48. Eight. But we're looking a little bit further down the field as well. Carter Thompson only a few hundredths of a second slower than that. Carter's down there in 19th position, the Australian rider. That gives you an indication of just how competitive the European Talent Cup is. Special shout out to Thompson. This is his first season in Europe. It's a hard transition to make whenever you're not in Europe anyway. He's uh, coming from Australia as a champion and back home. So it's going to be getting used to the feeling of not winning straight away here in the European Talent Cup. Yeah, but three years ago, Damo Cudlin said to me, keep an eye on Carter Thompson because he was a rider that Cudlin was taking under his wing a little bit and uh, certainly a talented rider that they expect to see really make the transition in Europe over the course of the next few years. But it is a case of having to learn an awful lot. You're learning Grand Prix style track. You're away from home. You're having to adapt to a very different life over here compared to racing in the Aussie Championships on the 300 like you had done in the past. 
so true that, Steve. It really is. It's a, a whole cultural and lifestyle change. He runs number 50. That is because Damien Cudlin used to run the number 50. Ooh, we've had a change at the front. That is coming through. That's Danish. He ran out wide, but onto the green. Martinez is going to look straight back. Yuri Arti, surely not. Oh, my goodness me. I thought he was coming through on the pair of them at turn 11. That is not a place to do a double overtake. Yeah, we did see in the junior GP class that uh, there was a few moves made there, especially on the last lap that ended in tears. So that's the section of the track where you need to have a lot of faith in the other rider range. Bonjo there had a little bit of a moment there through the last corner as well. That's what's allowed Roosh Moodley there on the 21 machine to close right up on him. Yeah, Moodley started out of this. He dropped to the back of this group, having grabbed the whole shot earlier on on lap one and turn one. He's still right there. I'm very impressed with Guillaume Blanc in sixth. This is the best ride he's had all season. Previous best finish this year of eighth place. He's just coming up to the fringes of the top 15, top 10 in the championship. It's Danish's team watch on. Danish is in second place. He's chasing Martinez. Martinez, double race winner here last year. How he needs to do it again this year. Uriarty to the inside, can't get it done. And it's all line astern at the moment, but it's a bit, I'm feeling it's a bit standoffish. No one's doing anything too drastic. All about keeping the powder dry. Yeah, nobody wants to make that big mistake right now. And certainly for the likes of Martinez, for Yuri Arti, a lot of points to make up in the championship standings. So they need to be a little bit careful. You can see there for Rouge Moody on 21, though. He's not being careful on the run down in towards turn six. He sees that there's a chance Ooh. that he makes some moves. A little bit of bar to bar action there on the run down in towards the left hander. Ends up getting ducked up a little bit there. And he's ran out a little bit wide. That allows Baggio to come back through. Yeah, that's just opened that group up a bit. Martinez, Danish, and Yuri Arti now, the top three slightly further up than they were, but Boggio be reeling that in. There was no doubt about that. Ah, oh, Christian Daniel, the American, has gone down. The number 70 all turn six. That's a uh, bit of a crashing hotspot, Steve. How many times have we seen that over the years? Yeah, turn six always lures you in, and uh, you can see there just uh, losing the front end. Very easy for that to happen. Just carry that little bit too much speed through there. And uh, the limit is the limit for a reason. And sometimes you can just step over it. But uh, for Daniel, it's all about trying to just gain your experience this season. Still very young. Whatever happens, whether it's a mistake or an achievement, it's all part of the learning process. It's why the European Talent Cup has gone on to produce world champions now. We've got, uh, oh, that's just, uh, yeah, we've got a uh, delay in the timing screen there about Christian Daniel's crash. The main thing is he's up and OK, and he's got another chance to do uh, a good, make a good result later on today. Uriarty still leading, head of Danish. Yeah, just uh, to go back to Daniel as well, his pace around the last few laps has been really impressive. It's been as fast as probably about eighth position, so that's quite impressive from him. He's also got another race this afternoon, so hopefully we're able to see that step forward once again from him. Yeah, it'd be great to have an American write up the order as well. We've got uh, the Spanish, we've got the the Italians, we've got South African, and uh, an Indonesian as well. So we're right up there at the moment with uh, with all the nationalities at the front of this. Six laps to go. Guillaume Plonk is still right here. There's still a good group. So we haven't spoke much about Rico Salmella, the number 27, just keeping uh, a watching brief say. He's not doing anything too drastic. And that kind of approach and attitude has got him a podium early on in the season at Estoril. And you can see there for Denish on the 13, just that big look over his shoulder. He wants to see who all is in this group as we move towards the final third of this race. It is uh, Yuri Arti out in front on the 51 race winner last time out. He claimed that race win by only, I think it was 14 thousandths of a second. And uh, it was a real close battle for him last time around. That's Buchanan that's gone down ah. the Kiwi rider on the number 14 machine. That's down at turn six as well. Well, that's a shame. Did he get a bit of help in all of this? Are we, we going to see it? Or is he, oh, no. he's going to slide into view now. The number 14 all on his own turn six, though. Track temperature might be coming up a little bit, Steve. I don't know if that's got anything to do with it. Do you think so? Well, it is starting to get warmer and warmer. You can see there the sun really is starting to come out. So I'd say by the end of this race, that's whenever we're going to get room those really high track temperatures. Just interesting as well, when we saw that replay at turn six, it looked like Johnny Garnes had gotten through on his teammate, Casey O'Gorman. That's really impressive from Garnes. He's riding really well in the British Talent Cup Championship, and uh, he's now been able to translate that into some decent performances here in the European Talent Cup. But certainly that team, those two riders, they would have expected to be a little bit closer to the front than just battling it out for a single point position right now. Yeah, Johnny Garnes, of course, British Talent Cup race winner back at the season over there. So 
definitely got the pace and he is showing good signs of good progress. I can remember uh, a year or so ago. The number 31's got a track limits warning. That's just come up on our screen. That's way down the order. That's Sanchez, he's in 19th. But I can remember Garnes coming in a couple of years ago. He was outside the top 20, outside the top 25, but slowly but surely, incremental steps are getting him towards the points and towards that top 10, that crucial top 10 in this category. Five to go. We're at turn six and leading the way still is uh, Uriarte. He's led the way for so long in this race. He has been the rider to beat. He was the winner last time out in a head-to-head -head with Joel Esteban, who's not here through illness, but Hakim Danish, wow! He was absolutely bouncing up to the rear end there of the number 51 at the Jorge Martinez Aspar corner at turn eight. Dodo Boggio, the Italian, is keeping the watching brief in third. Max Martinez, double winner here last year, eager to get back in the, in the title race. His fourth, had a Rouge Moody, the South African in fifth. Yeah, Denise on the 13 up there in second spot. Very impressive and consistent all the way through this season. One of the few riders that scored points in every race so far this campaign, I think. Guido Pini a little bit further down the order and in 12 spots second in the championship. One of the only other riders that's done that. So certainly for Danish, he's going to try and keep a cool head, make sure that he's in a position to be able to pick up as many points as he can over the course of this race because he's one of those riders, a lot of points down, 46 points behind the championship leader, Joel Esteban, as it is right now. So a couple of really good races, two podiums will do an awful lot to bring him back into that championship battle. And he's got to capitalise whilst the points are there to be to be taken. It's not about Esteban having a, a bad weekend. The fact is he's not here at all. Dodo Boggio with the fastest lap of 48.4. That is cracking on for time. That is four tenths faster than Uriarty last time out. And you can see on your screens, he's right up behind him and he's looking to make that move as Dodo Boggio just been waiting until the last four, three or four laps, do you think? Well, Boggio has done a good job to make sure throughout the course this race has been in those top three, four spots. And uh, now it looks like for the likes of Martinez on the 28, who we know has already got a track limits warning, that uh, he needs to just bridge that gap now. But uh, you can see for Danish on the run down in towards turn six, third to first, really good move there from the Malaysian rider. Very good from the Malaysian, the number 13 ahead of the 51 of Uriarte. Uriarte just being pushed out a little bit there as Danish came back across onto his racing line. That'll bring Dodo Boggio into play. I think Guillaume Plonk has just been dropped a little bit. He's still there hanging on, but he's just not making enough of an impact but still a great ride from him yeah I think for Plank, what we've seen over the course of this season is that uh, this is as good as it's been you know, obviously an extra really was able to come away with a top 10 finish other than that it's been battling it out for a point paying finish then in 14 15th position so this is a real step forward and uh, that's more than enough right now for him and uh, certainly you'd that's oh. Casey O'Gorman that's gone down that looks like it's turned six as well for O'Gorman yeah. Turn six, it's catching them all out. Casey O'Gorman, wow, oh. blue on the inside. Surely not. Oh dear, I thought he was going to take the lead in a minute there. Max Martinez, the number 28, doing what he does best and ramming his motorcycle right where the other people don't want it. But Casey O'Gorman, that's a disaster for him. Out of the points, paying positions. Five abreast into turn one with three laps to go. Rouge Moody had the biggest look at them all there. But Danish comes out on top. Danish, please, Poggio. Uriarty back through on Max Martinez. So Martinez tried to make up ground. He's a back where he started in fourth. Moved the Salmella and Plonk. <laughs> what was I on about? Plonk doing the business in seventh place. Has got right back up to the top six as they start to trip each other up. Yeah, for Plonk, it's about making sure he's in a position just to take advantage of anything that happens in front of him. He doesn't have the same speed as those riders in front of him, but he can latch onto the back of them and then try and see if he's able to make some moves because as you have it right now, you are going to have a lot of these riders under pressure. The likes of Denise, he's just been given a track limits warning. We know Martinez on the 28 machine has a track limits warning. So for all of these riders, they're having to be on their best behavior, only two laps to go. So for the likes of Plonk at the back of this group, this is an opportunity. Will he just try and make some big, brave moves to try and uh, get himself into the top five or will he settle for a, a season's best result inside the top seven. Yeah, it's a good result nonetheless. It's been a very good ride from Plonk. Seems to be a little bit out of it in sector two, but he comes right back in sector three, round this part of the circuit. Uh, the Pella Key corner, track limits warning coming up on your screen. That's the number 13 of Hakim Danish. He is in second place. He'll be looking to take the lead at turn 11, but he's not brave enough at this point of the race. Two laps and a little bit more to go until we get a race winner in race one of the Hawkers European Talent Cup. It's been a good battle so far. It's been measured. As I say that, Max Martinez proves me completely wrong. He makes a dive bomb for the apex. Up into second, 
for your double race winner last year at this track. Yeah, tidy move there from Martinez. He didn't come from too far back, but he was able to pick up two riders, and now he's able to use the slipstream to run in towards turn one, get himself to the race lead. Two laps to go, and uh, Martinez, last year's European Talent Cup winner, hits the front, and now it's going to be a question of whether the likes of Baggio are really able to go with him and give him a challenge, but the slipstream is so important in the ETC that it's really difficult to break away. I think Poggio might be in the best position here, Steve, with two laps to go. He's now getting a good look at where Martinez is strong, right where it counts at the end of the race. And Poggio has looked like he's got good pace right from the get-go here. So is the Aspar junior team rider going to look to try and force his way through the number 47 we're on about? He's in Max Martinez's slipstream here. Yuri Arce, the 51, winner last time out. Martinez on the blue. He can't be going on the blue. That's track limits. And he's done it since he got the, penalty, the track limits warning. So another time, and he will get a penalty for that, I'm fairly sure. Guillaume Plonk, the number 24, is up into fifth. Danish, who has had a track limit warning as well, is now back into sixth place. So Danish has got to start making moves. Dodo Boggio tries to follow suit as well and get to the front, but can't quite do it yet. Into the stadium section for the penultimate tie. Yeah, you can see here from Martinez, he's under a lot of pressure. Boggio has been able to get himself through this group on a few occasions during the course of this race, but now it comes down to who's got what it takes on the final lap. We know Martinez needs this race win for his championship standings. We also know Baggio's got a lot of points that he needs to make up at this stage as well. He's 49 points behind in the championship standings, so for both of these riders, they know this is their big opportunity. Yuri Ardi on the 51, race winner last time in Catalonia, he's got a lot of points to make up as well. It's a land of opportunity. We said it, we said it when we came into this part of the programme. Hawk, as you European Talent Cup. On to the last lap we go now for the final time. 4.4 kilometers of Jerez to go and Boggio is making his move but he can't quite get through. We've got yellow flags at turn 11. That's going to be fast. That's going to be really fast. So who is it? It looks like it could be Gonzalo Perez. If I, It is Gonzalo Perez. Our timing monitor is correct but that's going to be yellow flags in the final sector. You're going to have to roll out of it. Max Martinez is leading them handsomely through. That's good to see. <laughs> he's not happy but because he, he throws his gloves down, but it's good to see he's on his feet. Boggio looking on the inside. Can't get through. Turn five is crucial. Yeah, that's really good riding from Martinez, but looking third position there at Uriarty. He's got a good run down this back straight. Needs to use the slipstream to try and make a move into six. Rouge Moodley sweeping to the outside. Boggio was on track limits now on the last lap, but I don't know if they're counting that on the straight. Danish is out of control. He's up the inside. He somehow got it all parked up and pushes Martinez. That's going to push the Spaniard back to fifth. He's behind Rouge Mood. He's going to have Sal Mella coming through on him in a minute. The team are watching on. Let's get back to the action. Uriarty, 51, leads the 47 of Dodo Poggio, who is chasing the first win. He needs this win to get in the title battle. Steve, we're in the last sector. Who's it going to be? Uriarty looks really strong. He knows he's got 50 points to make up in the championship leader. But we've seen Poggio all the way through this race. Very fast fast in these right-handers at the end of the lap, but you need to be right there behind the 51 to try and attack into the last corner. Yellow flags are out last time around because of a crash of Paris. They've gone in now. It's all about the final corner. Yuri Arti was your race winner in Catalonia. Dodjo, Dodo Bodjo hasn't won a race, and Danish is going to do both of them. Oh, my goodness me, almost clips the back of Bodjo, who's got it stopped. He's in the lead. It's a short burst to the line, the number 47. Dodo Bodjo, has he timed it to perfection? Yes, he has has just from Uriarty, who, like in Catalonia, tried the run to the line but couldn't this time make it work. He's overhauled by the Aspar Junior team. Boggio takes victory. Uriarty second. Danish settles for third and fourth after being forced out, Max Martinez. Yeah, super stuff there from Dodo Baggio. First win in the European Talent Cup, and he had to earn it the hard way into oh, that oh, last oh. corner. Really impressive from Baggio. Fast all the way through the race, and uh, very fast when it counted on that last corner. But certainly, we saw Danish really sideways into there. That could have ended in tears. That could have ended in tears, and we've seen it all before in that corner. What a race that was. Dodo Baggio with a first win of the season and he's done it in style what a victory the number 47 he looked like he had pace all the way through the race and he does get it brian uriarty back into second place forced out by 23 thousandths of a second there's not a lot in it hakim danish with that track limits warning did that come into play 
on the final lap. Well, he's two tenths back and he did and half oh, send it at the final corner. Max Martinez in fourth, missing out on the podium, but makes up 13 points on the championship leader, Joel Esteban, who, as I say, is still out of this round. He's out for the rest of the round because of injury, or well, because of illness actually coming into this. Fifth place, Roosh Moodley. That is a fine effort for Moodley. Moodley is way down in the championship order. He's down in 15th place. That is, I believe, a career best for the number 21, uh, Roosh Moodley. Yes, it is. His previous best was seventh. That came at the start of the year from 10th of the grid at Estoril. Further down, Rico Salmana kept his powder dry all the way till the end. Ten points for him in sixth. Guillaume Plong, career best in seventh. Guido Pini, well, he's going to have another chance to try and capitalise on Joel Estevan's absence. He could only manage eighth. Ninth place was Garcia, Alberto Fernandez. Well, he didn't look like he had any pace throughout the weekend. He cracks the top ten, but only just. Jesus Rios in 11th. Emmanuel Brinton, 12th after a double long lap penalty. The number 57 on your screens there, wheeling away is Johnny Garnes. Johnny Garnes, good ride. 14th position for Garnes. That is his joint best of the season. So it's his second point scoring ride for Johnny Garnes who was ahead of Lorenz, Tony Luciano, the number 81, the Belgian rider from La Louvier, taking the last points paying position. Carter Thompson, 18th, the Australian champion, just behind Pau Al Alcina, who has actually been one of the standout performers all the way through the year. Let's look back, though, at the, the race winner. Dodo Boggio has arrived in Park Fermi, and a team are delighted. Nico Tawal will be bouncing up and down with joy. Boggio, a race winner for the first time. It wasn't uh, Tyrol bouncing up and down, of course. D but Tyrol was throwing Boggio in the air, but he will be delighted with that. So Dodo Boggio, a race winner. He's had a, a second place before. He's had two podiums coming into this um, this round there. So two podiums, a second and a third. Now he's got the cherry on top of the cake. He will stand on the top step for the first time. So good stuff from him. Brian Uriarte, well, he got ahead of Esteban on the run to the line in Catalonia, but he, the run to the line here at Jerez just isn't really long enough, even on these small 250cc motorcycles, to get ahead on the blast to the line. So second will have to do for Uriarte, but he moves on to... 65 points in the championship. He won't lead the title leaving this round now. He will still be um, over, uh, he'll still be behind Esteban. He's 30 points back at the moment. No one yet has cracked the 100 points mark. We're having a look then down into the last corner. Boggio gets it absolutely lit up through turn 12 and gets the move done really just before the breaking area. But look at Danny. How did he pull it down? He almost wipes out his teammate Uriarty. Then it's all about the run to the line. Danish actually is in a good position there to pick up a two-bike slipstream, but it's just not enough. Boggio, if the line had been a little bit further on, oh, it could have been a totally different story. 23 thousandths of a second. Dodo Boggio, the number 47, with a first race win, and that might well be the first of many still to come for the Italian. Boggio has been riding superb throughout this season. Really, he has been one of the, the standout additions in terms of the battle for the front. He's only 14 from Turin in Italy. He's always started inside the top eight. We said that in the grid build-up, and he's definitely showing now that he can convert that, sol that solid uh, um, consistency into a very, very good uh, race result. And he's with Steve now to talk about his first win in a class. Dodo Baggio, your first win in the European Talent Cup, and this was a real battle. Yeah, incredible race. All the, all the weekend I go fast. I, have a, I do faster lap alone, and this is my first, uh, my first win here in the European Talent Cup. I'm very happy. It was a very big battle with Maximo Danish and Uriarte, but in the last corner I can pass Uriarte and I win. I'm very happy. Uh, I had to, te to, do, to, to do thanks to my sponsor, to Talenti Azzurri and la Federazione Italiana. And your thoughts in Italian as well? È stata una gara bellissima, molto difficile. Non faceva molto caldo, infatti abbiamo girato più veloce rispetto alle qualifiche. Ma è stata veramente una gara dura, lì a battagliare insieme a Brian, Massimo e Danis. Ma alla fine sono riuscito a arrivare secondo all'ultimo giro. All'ultima corsa sono riuscito a passare Brian e sono riuscito a vincere. Thanks, Dodo. Congratulations. Thanks.
we've got another Italian saying he's very, very happy. Well, Dodo Boggio can celebrate, and Sabi's got to do it all again later. This is how he did it. Race one in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. Saw Roosh Moodley, the South African, from fourth on the grid, grab the initial hole shot. It was Brian Uriarty who would come through and actually lead the majority of the race. Boggio was right there, though, and went from third to first at one point, pushing Uriarty right out to the edge of the curb. Whilst Max Martinez, double race winner in Jerez last year, was also in the battle. There was a lead group of seven at the front with Rico Salmella, as well as Guillaume Plonk making a fantastic addition to the leading group for the first time. Max Martinez led into the stadium section, but was a little bit wide in the closing stages. Through came Danish. Both of them would get track limits warnings. Niche hitting the front, Roosh Moody was sideways on. A little bit of a collision with Uriarty pushed him back as Dodo Bojo came back through. A couple of crashes further down the field. The number 14 was Cormac McCannon, a New Zealander. He was one of many to go down at turn six. Keso Gorman would eventually join him. Whilst the battle was so fierce at the front, turn 13, the Jorge Lorenzo hairpin, iconic and infamous here at Jerez, delivering the goods. Boggio went to hit the front, Uriarty wanted to come through, and this was Danish on the final lap, shoving Max Martinez wide, whilst Boggio made his move for the victory at the last corner, Danish got it all crossed up, that ruled him out, Uriarty tried blasting it to the line, picking up the slipstream, weaving from side to side, but Dodo Boggio is a new race winner in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. Nico Terol was elated down in the Aspar Junior team, Another one for their growing list of talent inside that academy. Will we see Dodo Boggio move up to Junior GP very soon and perhaps onto the main world stage? Don't be surprised. It's the podium ceremony then here at the Secreto de Jerez. Angel Nieto for race two of five on today's packed billing in the south of Spain. Aspar junior team rider Dodo Boggio taking victory. Hakim Danish was third. He makes it onto the podium first. Second place goes in the way of Brian Uriarte, who won last time out, but Dodo Boggio is the race winner. Frank Vasse, the CCR director of the FIM, gets to hand out all of the trophies. The first one is to the team representative, so that's another one. They're going to get a new cabinet at this rate. There's had so many trophies in Jorge Martinez Aspar's camp. Danish, third place, consistency key in his 2022 title charge, particularly with series leader Joel Esteban out. Rian Uriarte tried to make it two wins on the spin, couldn't do so, so it's uh, second place for him at Jerez, but it's a career first victory for Dodo Boggio, a fantastic effort. As uh, another name signed on to the winner's list, it's Italy's fifth win in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. It's time for the national anthem very, very soon of Italy. Dodo Boggio with race one honours in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. He's the tenth different winner at the Jerez circuit, joining the likes of Zonta van den Gerberg, Marco Batelli, and of course Ethan Guevara, all of which have gone on to great success in the main world championship. We stand for the photo. They've got to do it all over again soon, though. They'll be celebrating any moment now. Dodo Boggio with a first win of the season. It's his third podium of the year. His title charge, whilst his teammate Joel Esteban is absent, now comes to fruition. Will it be a head-to-head -head come the end of the year? Well, we'll have to see about that. But one thing is for sure, no one could beat him in race one. Dodo Boggio 
a new race winner. And what a name he's got to do it as well. Fantastic stuff from the number 47. Final results see Brian Uriarty miss out by 23 thousandths of a second. Dodo Boggio with the effort to take his first win. Hakim Danish in third. Maximo Martinez and Rush Moodley, the South African, with a career best fifth. Salmela, Plonk, Pini, second in the championship coming into this round, couldn't capitalize. Whilst Garcia and Miguel came right up through the order into the top nine. Alberto Fernandez completes the top 10. Emmanuel Brinton, 12th place, but that doesn't tell you everything. He had to do a double long lap penalty for a jump start. That really cost him, but he was one of the fastest riders on the track at one point. Johnny Garnes in 14th. He was also very, very fast in the closing stages. Gets two points as well. A couple of disappointments. Hamad Al Sahuti missing out on points, having started inside the top 10. Whilst there was also a couple of big name crashes, and we'll come to them in a moment. Casey O'Gorman, one of them, and Gonzalo Perez, the other. Both of them have been right up the sharp end of various points this season, but no points from race one at Jerez. Joel Esteban, despite not being in attendance, is still the championship leader, leading into race two, 14 ahead of Guido Pini. Dodo Boggio's win puts him within a race win of Esteban, his teammate in third. Uriarty fourth, head of Danish fifth. Salmela Martinez now seventh, 41 adrift, but still with time to close down. Fernandez and Rios in the top nine. Casey Gorman of Ireland completes the top 10. Manuel Brinton, 11th. Rouge Moodley's fifth place, a career best fifth, as I say, puts him up into 12th. He starts this round in 15th. Again, Plock, big points there from seventh place. As he makes moves up the order. Lorenz, Tony Luciano, another who scored points. Johnny Garnes now level with Adriano Donoso in 24th and 25th as we go right the way through the order. Plenty of riders in the Hawkers European Talent Cup of 2022. Last on the order, Matt Rosebrook from the British Talent Cup as well as here with one point. Dodo Boggio becomes the latest of a long line of winners in the Hawkers European Talent Cup. It's a fifth win for Italy and it's another trophy added to the growing collection inside Jorge Martinez Aspar's cabinet. Will he do it all again later on? Stay with us, race two coming up this afternoon. But first, it's the Moto2 European Championship right now. 